So Armando from Baron Biosystems is here with a very exciting piece of tech that we're going to get to ride later. So if you could just talk us through it first, please. Sure, Joe, no um, problem. What we have here is a product that we're calling BioShift. Okay. And BioShift is an intelligent gear selection system for, for bicycles. What it does is it takes data from your typical sensors. On this bike, we have a speed and cadence sensor as well as a power meter. And um, when we take that data and also configure the system using the parameters of the individual, um, the system can then, using an algorithm, determine what is the optimal gear for that rider when they're riding the bike at every given instant. Yeah. So it'd be yeah. using my power data and weight and things like that. Exactly, so we've taken your physiological parameters, programmed them into the unit, collect the data from the bike, programmed what kind of gears you have on that bike, yeah. and then we can determine what's the optimal gear for you at every given instant. And then when we interface it to Sh Shimano's DI2 system, not only can we determine what, what gear is best for you at that instant, but we can also change and shift the gears for you and get you to that gear. So hands-free, optimal gearing all the time. Exactly, precisely. We have uh, set it up so that it'll do it intelligently because when, within a, the, the gearing system, um, you know, the, there's some severe angles. So there's some logic in there to prevent you from using the small oh, yeah. and small and the big and big, for example. So yeah. we've added some logic in, uh, in there to prevent uh, that from happening. There's also, we also use the sensor data to determine when it's inappropriate for certain gears to be changed. So for example, if you're climbing um, and you're putting a lot of torque on the system, um, you'll see that the system will automatically disable the front derailleur from automatically shifting. It can also be set up to run in training modes. So you can do things like uh, set it up to run in recovery mode while you're out on, while you're out on the road. So rein you in basically if you're, make sure you're not going to go too hard on the recovery days. Exactly, yeah. So it'll do some optimal shifting for certain ranges and then kind of prevent you from going uh, and kind of blowing your, uh, your recovery yeah, ride. Yeah. Okay, so, so there's some, certainly some applications today at, the, at kind of the high end. Um, but I think the goal eventually, as the prices of power meters and the technology comes down, We've kind of designed it so that it can be run transparently on a bike, so that you know if we don't even need a head unit. It could be embedded into the power meter or embedded into the shifting system. When it's um, implemented in, in that way, uh, uh, with that low cost, we can certainly see this technology being uh, put into a great many bikes that will have electronic shifting. So now the good bit, I'm going to get to climb on and have a go, which I've been really excited to do. Right, so I'll jump on, yeah, and you can okay. show me how it works. No problem. We're, right now, we're not in automatic mode, all right? So this is just like your regular bike. There's no automatic shifting or anything, but it does show you current, your power output and, yeah. and things like that. So it's um, you know, giving you the additional data of the current gear that you're in. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, to enable the automatic shifting, what we've done is if you, you're on the 36, so yep. if you, you take the 36 button here and just press and hold it for like a second and like let go, you'll see that our lights initially st go red, indicating that the automatic has been suspended just temporarily. Oh, and there it goes things there. are happening. Exactly. So you're seeing you're on the trainer, and now it's moved to the big ring. And there you go, it'll keep, it'll keep shifting. And now you're going through all the gears. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's cool. All right, and then if you slow down, and there it goes, and there it goes. Back down, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so again, it's based upon the current uh, and t t power intensity that you have, yeah. it will go ahead and, and, and give you the gear for, the, for that purpose. Yeah. Okay? And so now you can go ahead and, and disable it if you like. Just hold that down. Okay, so now it's turned off. Yeah. All right. Go ahead and use the 36 again. Turn it back on. So now it will start shifting for you. And so I'm not oh, pressing any gears. Yeah. It's changing. You're not changing any gears. It's doing yeah. that for you. The other interesting thing that, you, that the system will allow you to do is to now go into standing. What happens is when you stand, the algorithm needs to change because yep. you don't pedal as fast when you're standing. Yep. So what we've done to implement kind of a, the alternative algorithm for standing is you're going to use the multi-shift function, cool. okay? So you're going to upshift with the multi-shift function and it's, then our green light is going to turn blue and you're going to go ahead and now pedal while you're standing. So try that. 
hold that down, and now you can go ahead and stand. That's okay, cool. yeah. and now you sit back down again, and then use the downshift multifunction, or multi-shift, I mean, your cadence is back down yeah. again. So that's your little uh, uh, tutorial. Oh, a little five minute tutorial. Yeah, yeah. And now you're able to go out in the street and go try it out. Look forward to it. Cheers. Okay. So I just went out for a ride on the by shift, did about an hour and a half in and around the Bristol area, covering a few hills and a few flat bits through the town. I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to uh, technology. I've got a power meter and that's about it. So I was a bit skeptical of the by shift and I wanted to, I was definitely looking to try and find fault in it. We'd set it up for recovery pace only because I've got a, a hill climb coming up. So the idea was to do no hard efforts and it did a really good job of preventing me ever from going hard. I tried to kind of um, speed it up but no matter what I did it was always kind of going to go up the block and stop me from doing any more than 180 watts. So although it felt like a kind of frustrating ride because I couldn't go fast when I wanted to go fast, it definitely did its job very well which was to rein in my enthusiasm. In terms of pure performance and efficiency in a, in a race situation, uh, it's, it's difficult to say whether it'd improve or not. I think it's, it's the type of system you want to spend a lot of time with because there was obviously a bit of lag between shifts where the system would be catching up with the terrain or what you were kind of the input you were putting into it with your pedals. Uh, Mondo said that once you've used it for a, maybe a couple of weeks, you start to be able to predict the programming a bit better and you can kind of get a bit more out of the out of the system so I'm, I'm sure with anything any new technology it needs a bit of practice so there's definitely it definitely needs some ironing out so although it's, it's very new and obviously there's still uh, problems that need to be ironed out with it the the possibilities for what you could do with a system like that just seem endless we all every, everyone gathered around it once I'd got back and we were all chatting about all the different things you could do with training racing performance coaches could set training plans by the system so beyond that on a total beginner level, obviously it helps just with gear selection up climbs and just making sure people are in the right gear. You quite often see out on a mountain bike when people have a very first start, they might just not understand how gears work and you find people grinding up hills in the 5311, killing the knees. So obviously this is going to help you to just select the optimal gear. It's one less thing to worry about. So your your hands are always on the brakes, they're not worrying about gears. Yeah, it's, it seems like a could be a very simple solution obviously it's going to be expensive to start with and another thing i really liked about it was there was no kind of huge new system that you were popping onto your bike there wasn't a huge computer screen eventually it'll be totally integrated into your gear shift so it can be built onto any bike you'll never know it's there you won't need an, uh, a battery to put in a huge battery hanging off the bottom of your down tube or anything like that and that seems to be a nice clever addition it's keeping keeping things simple it's not on the market yet still seems to be in a very prototype stage. I feel very, very lucky to be able to have had a go on it. It was a real, real privilege to be able to go out and try, try something really cool like that. Uh, and I'll be looking forward to seeing it, hopefully in the future on lots more bikes. You've been watching Bike Radar. We're adding new videos all the time, so don't forget to click subscribe and let us know what you'd like to see more of in the comments below.